In an unfortunate turn of events, a young man named Yang Yun introduces himself as a graduating senior student. He shares that he came to the park for a special outing with his girlfriend. However, tragedy strikes when he finds himself drowning while attempting to rescue a dog that had fallen into the water. In a state of panic and desperation, he questions why this is happening and expresses his fear of dying prematurely. In a last-ditch effort to save himself, he grasps onto a nearby plant and manages to hold on, only to discover a surprising and peculiar pot attached to the plant's branch. This unexpected sight leaves him shocked and bewildered. As he continues to struggle against the water, he reflects on how he has been deceived by nature itself, finding it hard to believe that his life would end in such a foolish manner. In his final moments of consciousness, he laments the fact that he has never experienced the intimacy of sharing a kiss with another woman in his past life. When he opens his eyes, he hears someone calling out to him. It dawns on him that he has been rescued, saving him from his imminent demise. However, due to his disoriented state, he fails to realize that he has been saved and continues to dwell on his previous regrets, particularly the missed opportunities for romantic encounters. As he regains consciousness, the young man finds himself in a bewildering situation. Initially, he believes he is in heaven when he sees a girl kissing him, but upon further observation, he realizes that it is actually a dog licking him. Simultaneously, he hears a girl's voice expressing relief that he has regained consciousness. Curious about the identity of the girl, he asks who she is. She introduces herself as Zhao Nan and expresses gratitude for his heroic act of saving her dog. In return, he introduces himself as Yang Yun and expresses his gratitude for being saved. In the presence of Zhao Nan, Yang finds himself captivated by her beauty, comparing her to a shining star. However, their encounter takes an unexpected turn when another girl arrives and taunts Yang by acknowledging his presence with a sarcastic remark. To further add to his embarrassment, an old lady accompanying the girl also mocks him, suggesting that Yang should no longer feel guilty about breaking up with the two lovebirds who were openly flirting in broad daylight. Upon seeing his girlfriend Lily at the park accompanied by his own mother, Yang feels compelled to explain himself. He attempts to justify his actions by saying that he was merely rescuing Lily's dog. However, before he can fully express himself, Lily's mother interjects with a dismissive tone, implying that there is nothing more to explain. She belittles Yang, emphasizing his humble origins as a pauper from the countryside and mentioning his need to work at night to make ends meet. Lily's mother questions how someone from a rural background like Yang could possibly provide happiness to Lily. Adding to Yang's distress, Lily also speaks condescendingly to him, looking down upon him as she admits that she had only invited him to the park with the intention of breaking up. She further implies that their relationship was never suitable or compatible from the beginning. To emphasize her decision to move on, Lily hands Yang an invitation card, informing him that she is getting married on the 10th of the following month and expresses a hope that he will attend the wedding. In the midst of the sudden and distressing news, Yang finds himself shocked by the turn of events. Meanwhile, Zhao attempts to clarify the situation, suggesting that there may be a misunderstanding. However, Lily dismisses any possibility of misunderstanding and abruptly leaves the scene. In the aftermath, Lily's mother confronts Yang, issuing a threatening warning for him to stay away from their daughter due to his impoverished background. This further adds to Yang's distress and feelings of powerlessness in the face of their disapproval. Zhao, feeling saddened by the situation, takes responsibility and apologizes if her involvement caused any misunderstandings. However, Yang reassures Zhao that this situation was not her fault and that Lily and her mother had come prepared to break up with him. He requests some time alone to process his thoughts. Understanding the depth of Yang's emotions, Zhao attempts to offer consolation. She emphasizes that there is no shame in being born into poverty and that what truly matters is one's determination to overcome it. As a gesture of support, she hands Yang her contact card, encouraging him to reach out if he needs assistance, and bids him farewell. As Zhao departs, Yang remains standing there silently, grappling with the weight of the recent events. In the midst of Yang's frustration and confusion, a voice interrupts his thoughts, urging him not to be overly concerned about a woman. Intrigued, Yang scans his surroundings, searching for the source of the voice. Suddenly, a man's face materializes from smoke, startling Yang. In his fear, Yang questions whether the smoke man is a human or a ghost, seeking clarification about his identity. The smoke man reveals himself as a wild deity, introducing himself as Yutianxia. He explains that he is one of the twelve wild deities from the cultivation world, a realm associated with spiritual growth and supernatural powers. Yang is taken aback by the presence of a deity and wonders how the deity has appeared before him in such a manner. In response to Yang's skepticism, 
the deity dismisses his disbelief and draws attention to the universe pot that Jan had picked up earlier. The deity asserts that both the deity himself and the universe pot have come to Jan. To further validate his claim, the deity prompts Jan to examine his arm, where he discovers a symbol resembling a pot. This revelation leaves Jan astonished and contemplative, questioning whether the symbol on his arm is indeed connected to the time he found the universe pot. Jan begins to consider the possibility that the deity's claims about his divine status may be genuine. Filled with a newfound determination, Jan humbly appeals to the deity, requesting guidance and teachings to become stronger. In response, the deity cautions him about the arduous and perilous nature of the path to true understanding, which spans thousands of years. The deity questions Yang's resolve, pointing out that he allowed himself to become weakened by a woman, questioning how he can practice the Tao with such a mindset. Yang, feeling frustrated and fueled by a sense of humiliation, vents his anger by punching a wall. He expresses his unwavering determination, vowing that Huang Qin, the woman who caused him such humiliation, will face the consequences for her actions. This display of dedication catches the deity's attention, who recognizes and appreciates Yang's resolute mindset. The deity remarks that their meeting was destined. Acknowledging Yang's strong determination, the deity agrees to fix his thoughts and habits while imparting the supreme cultivation technique. The deity touches Yang's head, initiating a transfer of energy into his mind. Yang perceives a surge of energy flowing into him, and as it is fully absorbed, he experiences a profound transformation. He senses a significant increase in knowledge and improvement in all his senses, leaving him astonished by the vast amount of information he has acquired. After bestowing knowledge upon Yang and emphasizing the significance of the universe pot, the deity warns Yang not to become complacent in the future, urging him to continue his efforts. In response, Yang expresses his determination to seek revenge on Huang Qing at her wedding. However, in the midst of their conversation, Yang receives an urgent phone call that interrupts their interaction. Yan apologizes to the deity and promises to attend to the matter immediately. While Yan is preoccupied with the call, the deity continues to explain that in the future, he can only provide guidance and pointers, emphasizing that Yang's success ultimately depends on his own efforts. The deity also expresses a desire for Yan to view him not just as a teacher but in a broader context. When the deity turns around, expecting to see Yang, he realizes that Yang has vanished. Frustrated and angered by Yang's sudden disappearance, the deity voices his dissatisfaction, shouting out his frustration, expressing a desire for Yang to return. However, the deity's call goes unanswered as Yang is nowhere to be found. The scene transitions to Yang's workplace, where he arrives late and is scolded by a corpulent man who emphasizes the importance of maintaining his job. Yang apologizes to the man, acknowledging his mistake. As Yang is in this situation, he notices a group of peculiar individuals taking away a girl. Upon closer observation, Yang recognizes the girl as Lu Lingling, who is known as the school beauty. As Yang's attention shifts towards Lu Lingling, he observes her current state and deduces that she is heavily intoxicated. Reflecting on Lu's significance as not only the most beautiful girl in school but also his fellow student, Yang contemplates whether he should intervene and offer his help. Meanwhile, the corpulent man becomes increasingly frustrated with Yang's lack of attention towards him, expressing his anger at being ignored. He warns Yang that his actions may lead to termination from his job. Despite the man's reprimand, Yang remains focused on the dilemma of rescuing Lu, deliberating the consequences and seeking guidance from his grandma and sister. In a pivotal moment Yang recalls the words of his ex-girlfriend, which presumably influence his decision-making process. After considering all possibilities, Yang resolves not to have any regrets and determines to save Lu. Defying the expectations of the fat man, Yang asserts his determination, telling the man to step aside emphasizing his commitment to his chosen course of action. This decision surprises and shocks the corpulent man, who likely did not anticipate Yang's bold and resolute response. Meanwhile, in a separate room, a group of people is drinking while Lu remains unconscious. A bald individual suggests initiating a particular course of action. The man wearing a chain warns the group not to be too rough, reminding them that they have to report to Wan Xiao later. Suddenly, a knock on the door interrupts their conversation, causing some tension in the room. Yang bursts in, displaying his newfound power by kicking someone in the face and demanding the release of the girl. This unexpected and heroic entry shocks everyone present. In the midst of the intense situation, Yang himself is taken aback by his own abilities. He questions how he was able to destroy the door with a single kick, pondering if it's a result of a specific practice involving cleansing the marrow and cutting one's hair. As Yang is lost in his thoughts, someone charges at him. But he effortlessly evades the attack, further surprising himself with his increased reaction speed, improved defense, 
and enhanced agility. Noticing the significant boost in his powers, Yan finds himself facing a man with a tattoo who breaks a bottle, threatening to kill him. The man identifies himself as one of Xiao Ruan's men and intends to inflict harm on Yan, but Yan quickly defeats him instead. After the confrontation, Yan admonishes the group, warning them not to take advantage of intoxicated individuals, emphasizing that such actions are illegal. He then takes Lu with him to his home. On the same night, at Yang Yin's residence, Lu remains unconscious while Yang feels increasingly embarrassed by the situation. He questions his impulsive decision to bring home a heavily intoxicated girl, feeling inexperienced and uneasy about being in the same room with a girl. He mentions that his only previous intimate experience was holding hands with his ex-girlfriend. In this moment of self-consciousness, the deity unexpectedly appears behind Yang, prompting fear and curiosity. Yang is startled by the sudden presence and asks why the deity has appeared. The deity responds to Yang's outburst, questioning why he is yelling and accusing him of running off to sleep with girls without any explanation or gratitude for the deity's help. Suddenly, Lu awakens from her drunken state and begins making strange facial expressions, indicating that she is still affected by alcohol. Recognizing this, Yang turns to the deity and seeks guidance, asking if there is any way to help Lu rid her body of the effects of alcohol. The deity takes a moment to consider Yang's decision to help Lu regardless of the circumstances and agrees to assist him out of a sense of conscience. Before departing, the deity mentions a skill called the Hands of Thirteen Meridians from the knowledge he imparted to Yang, suggesting that Yang should try it out for himself. Yang acknowledges the importance of resting, as the previous energy-consuming process of cleansing the marrow and cutting one's hair has left him drained. He requests not to be disturbed and emphasizes the need for rest. Meanwhile, Yang begins searching for a book, and during this time, the intoxicated Lu playfully teases him. Once Yang finds the solution, he proceeds to use it to cure Lu's condition. In the next room, a couple overhears the noises coming from Lu and Yang's interactions, leading to a misunderstanding due to the strange sounds Lu makes while being treated. This situation continues throughout the entire night. Early the next morning, Lu wakes up and becomes anxious upon finding herself in an unfamiliar room. Lu unexpectedly encounters Yang and misinterprets his intentions. Despite Yang's efforts to explain and clarify the situation, Lu refuses to listen and accuses him of being a certain kind of person she didn't expect. Yang then reveals that Lu was intoxicated the previous night due to the influence of some individuals, and he actually saved her from an unfortunate situation. Lu recollects being at the bar with someone named Wan Wenhao and experiences mixed emotions of relief and slight disappointment. She questions whether her attractiveness has diminished, considering her initial misunderstanding. Seeking an explanation, Lu confronts Yang about waking up without clothes. She accuses him of scheming to take advantage of her beauty. However, Yang defends himself by stating that Lu undressed voluntarily, and he vividly remembers the events. Embarrassed, Lu dismisses those thoughts and apologizes for her initial misunderstanding. Lu feels let down by Yang's apparent lack of romantic interest in her and begins to question his sexual orientation. She wonders if he might be gay, assuming that any straight person would be instantly captivated by her. Yang, trying to redirect the conversation, advises Lu to go to school to avoid being late. Ten minutes later, as they arrive at the school entrance, Lu playfully thanks Yang for their interaction the previous night, sarcastically referring to him as her good gay friend. This statement angers and embarrasses Yang, prompting him to retaliate by accusing Lu of being the one who is gay and even insulting her entire family. Lu then questions Yang about her lack of hangover despite his earlier claim that she had been intoxicated. She also expresses a sense of relaxation instead of the expected discomfort. Yang explains that he possesses knowledge of an ancient acupuncture technique, which he used to assist Lu in eliminating the effects of alcohol. Lu expresses her surprise and delight at Yang's medical skills, suggesting that he should practice on her again in the future as it brings her satisfaction. Unbeknownst to them, nearby students misunderstand Lu's words, leading to potential misinterpretation. After their brief exchange, Lu proposes that they go to class first and meet later for lunch at noon. As Lu departs, a student approaches Yang from behind and identifies him as Yang Yin. The student confronts Yang, issuing a threat and warning him to stay away from Lu Ling Ling. The student belittles Yang, implying that someone like Lu would never be interested in a person of his standing, referring to him as poor and pedantic. Yang attempts to clarify the misunderstanding and explain his relationship with Lu, but a bigger student suddenly charges at him, introducing himself as Yu Xiaogang. Yu asserts that it is time for Yang to be taught a lesson, threatening him with the intention of being the one who will destroy him. Sensing the imminent danger and recognizing the importance of not being late for class, Yang swiftly retaliates, 
overpowering and defeating Yu Xiao Gang in a physical altercation. However, Yang feels embarrassed about allowing his excitement to get the better of him and acknowledges that he should have controlled his strength. During the lunch break at noon, Yang waits for Lu as planned. While waiting, Lu arrives with her friend, whom she introduces first, emphasizing their close bond. Lu's friend with purple hair is introduced as Qian. And then her black-haired friend, Lin Huan, introduces herself. After the introductions, Lu informs Yang that she will be leaving with Xiao Bei to order a meal, instructing him and Lin Huan to wait in the designated location. Yang bids them farewell and tells them to take their time. As they depart, Yang finds himself captivated by the girl's presence, causing her to assume he is interested in her. Yang approaches her, expressing the need for an important discussion. Simultaneously, Lu shares her admiration for Yang's medical skills with her friend, highlighting his expertise in the field. While Lu and her friend engage in conversation near a door, they suddenly catch sight of Yang and the girl in a peculiar situation. Misunderstanding the scene, they initially dismiss it as a product of their tiredness, considering it impossible. However, curiosity gets the better of them, compelling them to take another look. Upon closer observation, they realize that their initial perception was correct, shocking Lu. In her surprise and frustration, she punches Yang, demanding an explanation for their actions. Angered by the punch, Yang defends himself by explaining that he was simply trying to give Lin Huan a massage. After being questioned by Lu, Yang explains that he diagnosed the girl, Lin Huan, with a rare pulse condition, a condition that his aunt had previously recovered from. He further clarifies that his massage was aimed at relieving her symptoms. Lin Huan confirms the effectiveness of Yang's treatment, expressing a greater sense of comfort. Yang advises her to continue taking the prescribed medications, assuring her that she will recover soon. However, Lu feels embarrassed by her earlier actions and impulsively kicks Yang out of the room. Despite having helped them, Yang expresses his frustration, remarking that nobody appreciates decency in the present day. As Yang ponders the situation, he senses someone behind him. Turning around, he discovers that the individuals approaching him are the same ones seeking revenge for their previous encounter with Yang. Upon seeing the persistent presence of the him and his companion, Yang expresses frustration, remarking on their persistent nature. Meanwhile, the big boy named Yi Xiaogang notices Lu among the crowd. Lu, trying to comprehend the situation, remains unaware of Xiaogang's intentions. In Xiaogang's mind, he revels in the opportunity to defeat Yang in front of Lu, considering it his lucky day. One of the members from Xiaogang's group steps forward, confronting Yang and warning him to leave Lu if he is involved with her. Otherwise, the big guy threatens to take action to rectify the situation. The students around them overhear the conversation, leading to gossip and speculation, attributing the conflict to jealousy over the school's most attractive girl. Lu, upon becoming aware of the situation, feels nervous and anxious. Meanwhile, Yang responds to the big guy's warning, seemingly agreeing to leave. The big guy becomes confused by Yang's response, questioning whether he truly liked Lu and if he would really leave just like that. In response to the big guy's confusion and repeated interruptions, Yang denies having any romantic feelings for Lu. However, the big guy stops Yang again, prompting Yang to question his intentions and whether he wants Lu and Yang to break up or stay together. Yang asserts his decision to never leave Lu's side. Lu, feeling shy and taken aback by Yang's words, comments on how his statement sounds like a public confession. Enraged by Lu's remark, the big guy loses his temper and declares his determination to confront and defeat Yang. He commands his companions to charge at Yang, prompting a physical confrontation. Despite the aggression from the big guy's men, Yang defends himself skillfully and breaks their wrists as a means of self-defense. He attributes the consequences they face to their association with Yu Xiaogang, stating that they should blame him for their current predicament. The big guy acknowledges Yang's capability and recognizes that Yang defeated Yu Xiaogang. He charges at Yang, attempting to use a kicking technique against him. However, Yang effortlessly stops his kick and retaliates by kicking him in the face, surprising everyone present with his display of power. After defeating all of his opponents, Yang expresses regret over the situation, stating that he didn't want it to happen but was forced into it. Lu, witnessing Yang's impressive fighting skills, is surprised and finds him handsome during the altercation. Her thoughts reflect her admiration for his newfound abilities. Later, at Yang's residence, he engages in cultivation, honing his skills. Yang reflects on the gradual improvement of his skill called Universal Good Fortune. He also mentions having explored ancient books left behind by his master, discovering a technique called youth retention, which can preserve one's youthful appearance. While this technique may not hold much value in the realm of immortal cultivation, Yang envisions its potential as a valuable treasure if mass-produced in the real world. 
Upon receiving a phone call, Yang answers to find his friend Lu Shichi on the other end who informs him about trouble at the Ruoji building. Concerned, Yang hastily makes his way to the designated location, wondering if his childhood friend, Lu Shichi, could be involved in provoking others. Next, at the Ruoji building, a group of people scolding someone. The bald man who leading the scolding confronts Lu Shichi, expressing the gravity of their actions. Lu Shichi, who is also Yang Yin's childhood friend, apologizes, asserting that the actions were unintentional. The bald man berates Shichi, accusing him of being a lousy security guard and asserting that someone named Song Xiao agreed to purchase a blue and white porcelain from him. The bald man claims that Shichi owes him 200,000 yuan, questioning his ability to pay. A person with purple hair, accompanying the bald man, interjects, realizing that the payment has not yet been made despite the signed agreement. The purple-haired person demands half of the payment from Shichi. The bald man sarcastically comments on the purple-haired person's generosity, acknowledging it with laughter and stating that he resembles a mature, respectable adult. The purple-haired person justifies their demand by referring to it as an accident. As Shichi contemplates agreeing to the demand, Yang suddenly appears on the scene and intervenes. Yang inquires about the situation. Shichi expresses joy upon seeing Yang and acknowledges his surprise at Yang's direct arrival. Shichi proceeds to explain the situation to Yang, providing context regarding the ongoing argument. Meanwhile, Zhao happens to pass by the scene while heading to her meeting. Upon observing Yang engaged in an argument from behind, she momentarily pauses. Her assistant inquires if there is a problem. To which Zhao dismisses her assumption of recognizing someone and suggests they continue on their way. As the argument ensues, the old man and the purple-haired individual continue to confront Yang. The purple-haired person emphasizes the significance of the vase, identifying it as a tributary blue and white porcelain vase from the Song dynasty. Frustrated, the bald man issues a warning to Yang, highlighting the importance of respecting people, especially someone named Song Xiao. Upon hearing the exchange, Shichi intervenes, advising Yang to let go of the matter. He takes responsibility and expresses his intention to find a way to compensate for the damages incurred. Intrigued, Yang approaches the broken vase, picking up a piece of it, and contemplates its significance as a tributary blue and white porcelain vase from the Song dynasty. Yang's keen observation of the vase's small details surprises him. He attributes this heightened perception to the physical and sensory improvements he gained from his encounter with the master. Being a top student in the history department, Yang's knowledge allows him to quickly assess the quality and age of materials with a glance. Upon examining the fragments, he notices modern and slightly aged residue, accompanied by a pungent chemical smell. Realizing that the vase is a fake, Yang becomes angry. Shichi notices his agitation and asks what's wrong. In his fury, Yang retaliates by punching the bald man. Confused, the bald man questions why he was struck and asserts his importance, demanding respect. The purple-haired man also expresses his dissatisfaction, accusing Yang of breaking an antique and now resorting to violence against proper individuals. Yang's anger intensifies, and he threatens to physically harm them, emphasizing that if they continue to harass his brother, he will mercilessly beat them to death. Shichi intervenes to understand the situation, questioning the commotion that has unfolded. Yang informs him that the antique they were discussing is a counterfeit. This revelation surprises Shichi, who had been unaware of the vase's authenticity. In response, the bald man challenges Yang's accusation, questioning whether he has any evidence to support his claim before accusing others. Shichi, curious about the details, expresses his interest in what Yang has discovered. Yang, confident in his assessment, explains that as a top college history student, he can easily see through their deceptive tactics. He challenges the perpetrators to involve the police to validate their claims if they are so confident in their innocence. Realizing they have been exposed, the bald man and the purple-haired man attempt to escape, warning Yang that he hasn't seen the last of them. However, Shichi prevents their escape, unwilling to let them go after they deceived him with the counterfeit item. Shichi takes matters into his own hands and beats both of them as a form of justice. Later, at a restaurant, Yang and Shichi enjoy a meal together. Shichi expresses his gratitude to Yang, acknowledging that if it weren't for his intervention, the two scammers would have successfully fooled him. Yang brings up the past, recalling how Shichi had once aspired to become an exceptional captain in the city's army. He expresses surprise at Shichi's current occupation, wondering how he ended up in a different field. In response, Shichi shares a sense of sadness, acknowledging the difficulties of climbing the social ladder and making a substantial income in society, particularly for individuals who come from humble backgrounds. Upon hearing Shichi's words, Yang gets an idea and proposes to him. He suggests that they join forces to establish a business empire, 
potentially seeing an opportunity for success and wealth in their partnership. Shichi is taken aback by Yang's proposal, assuming that Yang is joking about building a business empire. He laughs, suggesting that Yang might have been influenced by unrealistic get-rich-quick schemes. Yang, however, insists that he is serious and shares his idea with Shichi. Yang reveals that he possesses a formula for a coveted secret to preserving youthful beauty, a cosmetic product that, if mass-produced with the right resources, could revolutionize the beauty industry in China. Shichi starts to believe Yang's sincerity and expresses interest in hearing more about his plans and background. Just as Yang begins to explain further, he receives a call from Lu. She requests another massage from him, mentioning that she has relatives visiting. Yang, being preoccupied with his conversation with Shichi, initially declines, stating that he is having supper with a brother. Lu playfully threatens to expose a fabricated rumor that Yang is gay unless he helps her. Faced with this predicament, Yang agrees to assist her and pleads with her not to spread the false rumors. He then asks Lu to pass the phone to Lin Huan, suggesting that he will teach her how to give the massage herself. Finally, Yang proceeds to explain everything to Huan. After finishing his explanation to Shichi, Yang puts the phone on speaker, unaware that Lu is on the other side making strange noises while receiving a massage. Shichi overhears this and offers support to Yang. Yang quickly assures Shichi that it's not what he thinks, likely referring to the noises and the potential misinterpretation of the situation. Shichi understands that Yang may still be affected by his recent breakup and suggests that he needs to remain vigilant, emphasizing that he is there for him. Later, Yang at Yaowang Mountain, walking around and reflecting on the recent incident involving Lu and the spreading of rumors about him. He realizes that his reputation was at risk due to Lu's actions. Recalling the teachings from an ancient book called The Secret to Preserving One's Youth, given to him by his master, Yang understands that the creation of the youth retention pill requires a Chinese traditional medicine called plantigo. While wandering in the mountains, Yang encounters an old man who appears to be gathering medicinal herbs. The old man asks if Yang is also there to collect medicine. Yang confirms this and asks the old man to guide him in the direction of Zongcheko, a specific herb he is seeking in the mountain. The old man, despite Yang's attempts to communicate with him in the local language, fails to understand what Yang is saying. This frustrates Yang, and he expresses his anger while repeating himself. Eventually, the old man comprehends and provides detailed instructions on how to find the desired herb. He instructs Yang to locate a specific mountain path go east for 200 meters, find a small stream, follow it until reaching limestone, continue past the mountain, cross a bamboo forest and coniferous trees, and eventually arrive at a spring where the herb should be found nearby. Grateful for the directions, Yang thanks the old man and continues on his way. Meanwhile, the old man ponders over Yang's request, wondering if he was searching for a type of grass or if he was engaging in some peculiar activity involving a car. After hours of walking, Yang grows tired and realizes he has yet to come across any sign of the herb. He begins to doubt the old man's honesty, hoping that he wasn't misled. Suddenly Yang hears sounds of a fight nearby. He approaches the scene and sees a large snake engaged in combat with an animal that speaks like Pikachu, a character from the popular franchise Pokemon. Surprised by this unexpected sight, Yang wonders if he has encountered a real-life Pokemon. As the giant snake's attack redirects towards Yang, he realizes that it was not specifically targeting him. He observes the remarkable agility and efficiency of the massive python, appreciating its swift movements and adaptability within the dense forested mountains. In the midst of the action, Yang notices a small creature resembling a Pikachu-like anime character, which effortlessly evades the snake's attacks. Intrigued by its abilities, Yang recognizes the potential of this little creature. However, the animal eventually gets struck by the snake, looking at Yang with hope. Yang contemplates the natural principle of survival of the fittest and considers the potential dilemma it presents. Despite this, he finds himself drawn to the animal's delicate and adorable nature. Driven by curiosity and the desire to test his own strength, Yang makes a decision. He swiftly rushes towards the injured creature, scooping it up in his arms, and carries it away from danger. After Yang successfully defeats the snake, he taunts it for being nothing more than an ordinary snake, albeit larger in size. As the victorious encounter concludes, the Pikachu-like animal tries to communicate something to Yang. Curious, Yang asks if the animal wants him to follow. The animal nods in confirmation, and Yang decides to follow it. He senses a positive aura emanating from the creature and is intrigued by its apparent understanding of his words. As they continue their journey, Yang is taken aback when they arrive at a location. He exclaims in surprise, realizing that he has finally found a high-quality plant to go, a valuable medicinal herb. Looking up, he notices something peculiar. Driven by his curiosity and determination, 
Yam begins to climb upward, aware that this territory belongs to giant pythons. He acknowledges the likelihood of finding precious herbs in such an environment. Upon reaching the top, Yam examines the plants present. He identifies one as resembling ripe ginseng, displaying optimal maturity. However, he also notices another unfamiliar plant and expresses his curiosity about its identity and properties. As Yang approaches the plant, he suddenly hears his master's voice resonating from the symbol in his hand. The deity informs him about the presence of the star spiritual grass, a rare and highly valued treasure in the heavenly realm. The deity urges Yang to assist in restoring his soul by promptly collecting the plant and placing it into the pot. To Yang's surprise, as he attempts to pick the plant, it effortlessly enters the pot on its own. Yang remarks on the plant's convenient extraction, noting how easily it can be obtained. After securing the plant, Yang turns his attention to the Picacho-like animal. Upon closer inspection, he recognizes it as a type of mink with a benevolent nature and the ability to comprehend human speech. Concerned for its safety in the treacherous mountains, Yang decides to take it home and care for it. With a mischievous expression, he addresses the animal referring to it as his precious little mink and emphasizing that its life would be precarious if it remained in the mountains. Yang invites the animal to join him, offering protection and companionship as brothers. Upon hearing Yang's words, the initially angered animal's demeanor changes when Yang offers a lollipop. The sweet treat seems to pacify the animal, returning it to a calm state. From that moment on, the wild mink with its wise soul becomes Yang Yilin's faithful and devoted companion. In his home, Yang sets about brewing the plants he had collected from the mountain to create a potion. He had gathered all the necessary medicinal materials and followed the instructions outlined in The Secret to Preserving One's Youth. However, he encounters difficulties as the potion fails to yield the desired results. Yang wonders if he needs an alchemist's furnace, considering whether his induction cooker could serve as a substitute. Contemplating the possibility of maximizing the heat, he is interrupted by the sound of the doorbell. Realizing his medicine is in danger of burning, Yang hurries to answer the door. Upon opening it, he discovers Lu standing there, awaiting his response. Yang greets Lu with a bored expression, questioning the reason for her visit. Lu playfully remarks that a beautiful woman came to his door, jokingly insinuating his potential homosexuality. However, she soon detects a strong, unpleasant odor and asks if Yang is cooking dung, teasing him about the smell. Realizing the situation, Yang rushes to the kitchen, turns off the stove, and exclaims in frustration that the dish is ruined. Lu continues to joke, suggesting that Yang was indeed cooking feces. Yang, annoyed, denies the accusation and challenges Lu to taste it if she doesn't believe him. Despite the mishap, Yang feels delighted as he realizes that his pill-making endeavor has been successful. Lu, curious about the situation, expresses admiration for the pills, commenting on their beautiful appearance. Yang, after picking a pill and examining it closely, notices that its color is slightly lighter than described in the book, The Secret to Preserving One's Youth. He attributes this discrepancy to the absence of an alchemist's furnace in the manufacturing process. Despite the slight variation in color and what he perceives as a reduced effectiveness, Yang becomes emotional and realizes that, for ordinary people like himself, the pill is still more than sufficient. He expresses gratitude for finally achieving success in creating the pill. Observing Yang's peculiar behavior, Lu asks if he is unwell, as he seems to be fixated on a pill and shedding tears. Yang, in response, questions Lu's reason for coming to him suggesting that it must be for something other than seeking an intense massage. Embarrassed by Yang's assumption, Lu clarifies that she has come seeking his assistance with a pimple on her face. She expresses concern about the acne and how it may affect her appearance at school, emphasizing the urgency for it to disappear soon. Yang, now understanding her request, contemplates how he can help her. Upon hearing Lu's concern about her acne, Yang becomes happy and sees this as an opportunity to test the effectiveness of a pill he has. He thinks of it as destiny bringing him a chance to experiment with retaining youthful beauty. However, Lu notices Yang's peculiar smile and warns him not to have any inappropriate intentions. Yang points to the pill and assures Lu that he has a solution to her problem. He explains that he has refined a beautification pill based on his grandfather's prescription, which is effective both locally and internationally. He believes that just one pill should solve the issue. Lu becomes apprehensive and questions whether Yang is serious about consuming such a strong-smelling substance expressing her concerns about its potential side effects. Yang, with an evil expression on his face, confidently asserts his medical skills to Lu, implying that he can take care of her acne problem. Lu, while acknowledging the potential effectiveness of the pill, expresses her aversion to its odor and requests Yang to feed it to her. Feeling embarrassed by Lu's request, Yang reluctantly agrees and feeds her the pill. 
Lou, determined to cure her acne, willingly accepts and thinks that she's willing to make this compromise. After taking the pill, Lou experiences a surprising lack of odor and a hint of sweetness, followed by a numbing sensation throughout her body, which she finds pleasurable. Observing the effects of the pill, Yang comments that she only needed to take one pill and that she made a big fuss about it. Lu retorts that he didn't have to force her to take it. Yang then leans closer to Lu and remarks that the acne has disappeared, leaving her skin delicate, highlighting the pill's effectiveness. In disbelief, Lu retrieves a mirror to examine her face and is pleasantly surprised to see that her acne has indeed vanished. Overwhelmed with gratitude, Lu expresses her appreciation by kissing Yang on the cheek. After Lu unexpectedly kisses Yang, she playfully teases him, remarking on his innocence. Yang, taken aback by the kiss, responds angrily, accusing her of seducing him and expressing his intent to take action. Lu continues to tease Yang, questioning his capability to follow through on his words. Provoked by her teasing, Yang presses Lu against the wall, implying a more forceful approach. Lu, feeling shy and uncertain, wonders if this is acceptable and whether Yang will truly act in such a manner. Anticipating her first kiss, Lu closes her eyes in anticipation. However, to Lu's surprise, Yang does not kiss her. Instead, he stands there and offers her the pills he made. Yang questions whether she genuinely wanted him to kiss her, and explains that she should take the remaining pills, assuring her that they will help her overcome her acne problem. Feeling embarrassed by her earlier teasing, Lu tries to regain her composure and downplays the situation by asserting that she knew Yang wouldn't dare to do anything to her. In response, Yang asks if she truly believes that he wouldn't take any action. After Yang offers the medicine to Lu, she becomes scared and decides to leave. She expresses her acceptance of the medicine but also assumes that Yang must be gay. With a dismissive attitude, she says goodbye and leaves his house. As Lu leaves, she reflects on her experience and wonders why her heart is beating so fast. She questions whether she has developed feelings for Yang, despite her initial misconceptions about him. Later that night, Yang engages in cultivation. During this process, he recalls the knowledge imparted to him by his master and focuses on a particular skill called the wushing induction arts. He recognizes its resemblance to the five animals' martial arts, a comprehensive technique involving offensive, defensive, and flexible skills. Yang sees the importance of mastering this skill to prepare himself for future challenges that cannot be overcome through brute force alone. Upon completing his cultivation session, Yang checks the time on his watch and realizes that he has accomplished something significant after training for several days. However, his moment of satisfaction is interrupted by a phone call, leading him to wonder who could be calling him at such a late hour. Upon opening the message he received, Yang discovers that it is from Lu. She informs him that she has informed her father about the beauty pill he developed and that her mother has tried it and loved it as well. She then extends an invitation from her father for Yang to come over for dinner that evening mentioning that there is something he would like to discuss with him. Yang considers this message and recalls that Lu belongs to a family with a household business. He recognizes that this situation presents potential opportunities for him. Yang is en route to Lu's house, accompanied by an elderly man with white hair who is driving the car. The old man expresses surprise at Yang's youthful appearance, acknowledging his development of the youth retention pill and commending his skills. Yang modestly laughs and responds respectfully attributing his success to improving a traditional formula passed down by his grandfather. Upon arriving at Lu's house, Yang is taken aback by its grandeur. He had known that Lu's family was involved in a family business, but he hadn't anticipated her residence to be in the most luxurious villa area of the city. This revelation leads him to realize that the Lu family business is much more substantial than he had previously thought. As Yang steps out of the car, he is greeted by Lu, who expresses her eagerness for his arrival. Yang, Puzzled by Lu's polite demeanor, doesn't understand the reason behind her formal and enthusiastic reception. Lu emphasizes that she has been waiting eagerly for him for quite some time. At that moment, Yang Yun's expression turns into a frown as he realizes that Lu's sincerity is questionable. He notices a white haired boy standing nearby, visibly consumed by jealousy, while Lu's friend laughs at the side. Yang comprehends the situation and confronts Lu, asking if she is using him as an excuse to avoid something else. Lu openly admits that she had mentioned Lin Huan, Xiao Bei, and now Yang as her lovers. She points to the white-haired boy and expresses her lack of interest in him, referring to him as a troublesome person. However, she explains that she is unable to do anything about his presence and requests Yang's help, emphasizing that the show must go on. The white-haired boy becomes increasingly jealous of Yang's proximity to Lu. He grabs Yang and criticizes him, suggesting that Yang, as a supposed loser, is inferior to him. 
the white-haired boy expresses disbelief and considers it a joke that someone like Yang could be considered better than him. Lu, fueled by anger, responds to the white-haired boy's comments by defending her boyfriend, Yang. She asserts that he has no right to speak ill of her partner. In an attempt to show off in front of the white-haired boy, Yang dismisses the boy's words, referring to them as insignificant and considering him an unqualified follower. The white-haired boy becomes even more enraged and charges at Yang. Sensing the impending danger, Lu warns Yang about the boy's martial arts background, cautioning him to be careful. Meanwhile, Yang contemplates his own abilities and the attacks coming from a mortal opponent, reflecting on his training in the Wuxing Induction Arts and perceiving the attacks as existing on a different time plane. The white-haired boy arrogantly acknowledges Yang's skill in blocking his attacks, admitting that he understands why Lu is attracted to Yang. However, he then boasts that Yang will soon be defeated by a ferocious bear. In response, Yang slaps the boy and ridicules him for his arrogance, suggesting that he is overestimating himself despite being nothing more than a follower. The sudden turn of events and Yang's display of power surprise everyone present. At that moment, Lu Lingling's father, Lu Shanhai, arrives on the scene. Upon Lu Shanhai's arrival, he questions the presence of the lingering individuals outside and is greeted by everyone. Yang, observing Shanhai's watchful gaze from above, realizes that he had underestimated Shanhai's intentions. He had initially ignored Shanhai's observation, fearing that it might lead to trouble. However, it becomes apparent that Shanhai wanted to observe and test Yang before forming an opinion. Yang finds Shanhai's motives difficult to understand. Subsequently, they all enter the house, and Yang takes note of the lingering resentment in the white-haired boy's expression. Yang recognizes the significant difference in power between them and comprehends why Lu Lingling does not hold affection for the troublesome boy. Inside the house, Shanhai extends a warm welcome to everyone and expresses his appreciation for Yang's significant contributions in assisting his daughter. He emphasizes that he does not consider Yang an outsider and serves him a meal as a token of gratitude from a father to a nephew. Upon hearing Yang's explanation about helping Lu, Shanhai responds with laughter, remarking that Yang is being too modest. He reveals that both he and his wife have used the youth retention pill and acknowledges its remarkable effects. Shanhai expresses his desire for Yang to consider bringing the pill to the market. The white-haired boy, who has been eavesdropping on their conversation, inquires about the rumored youth preservation pill that can make one appear five years younger. He directs his question to Shanhai and mentions how Lu Lingling has described it as priceless and rare. In response, Yang politely downplays the extravagant claims, suggesting that Lu Lingling may be exaggerating the pill's value and rarity. The boy, still resentful towards Yang, rudely interrupts their conversation and questions Yang's right to speak on the topic of the youth retention pill. Amidst the boy's arrogant remarks, the others present at the table find his ignorance amusing and begin to laugh. The boy continues to mock Yang, revealing that he had investigated Yang's background prior to their meeting. He highlights Yang's humble origins, mentioning his father's military service resulting in his disappearance, and the dependence of Yang's sister and grandmother on each other within their household. The boy concludes by belittling Yang's financial situation, insinuating that he must take on part-time jobs to sustain his living expenses. He dismissively tells Yang to leave, asserting that he is undeserving of dining with people like them. Upon hearing the boy's disrespectful remarks, Shanhai becomes indignant and rebukes the boy for his nonsense. He firmly states that Yang is undoubtedly the one who developed the youth retention pill, emphasizing his significant contribution. Shanhai questions the boy's rationale for denying Yang the right to dine with them at the same table, considering the positive impact Yang's invention has had on their household. Furthermore, Shanhai warns the boy that if he continues to harass Yang, he will not hesitate to worsen relations with the whole family, implying potential consequences for the boy's actions. The boy, taken aback by this revelation that the pill was indeed developed by Yang, is left shocked and likely reconsiders his previous disrespectful behavior. The boy defiantly stands and asserts that Yang's achievements matter little compared to the prearranged betrothal between him and Lu Lingling, a decision made by their grandparents. Lu dismisses the validity of such an arrangement, stating that it holds no substance and even Lu's father distances himself from the supposed marriage agreement, claiming ignorance. Lin Huan and Xiao Bei interject, highlighting Yang's medical accomplishments and expressing support for a natural connection between Yang and Lu. The boy, feeling insulted, insists that the discussions about Yang and Lu's relationship are meant to humiliate him. Nevertheless, he remains firm in his belief that the scheduled arrangement from ten years ago is binding. Declaring himself, Ho Yao, destined to marry the future daughter-in-law of his family. In a surprising turn of events, Lin Huan and Xiao Bei begin to grasp the boy's audacious plan and inquire, 
visibly taken aback. The boy confidently confirms their suspicions, asserting that Lu Lingling is now his fiancée, and he intends to take her away for marriage. However, Yan swiftly intervenes, delivering a resounding slap to the boy, admonishing him for indulging in fictional fantasies and reminding him that Lu has expressed her unwillingness. As the boy retreats, he issues a veiled warning to Yan, insinuating consequences if not for Lu Shanhai's intervention. Post the altercation, Lu's father approaches Yang, wearing a knowing smile, and suggests they finish their meal before discussing potential cooperation. Internally, he acknowledges Yang's audacity in facing the affluent with such boldness, foreseeing significant business potential in him. Two hours later, within the confines of Lu's father's office, strategic discussions between him and Yang unfold. After ironing out the details, Lu's dad outlines the proposed business arrangement. Yan would spearhead the technological aspect, with the Lu family contributing raw materials, venues, and overseeing sales. The profit distribution stands at a 70 to 30 split, favoring Yang with 70%. Yang, wearing a satisfied smile, readily agrees to the terms. Impressed by Yang's straightforward approach, Lu's dad chuckles and encourages Yang to proceed with the signing of the documents. While Yang complies, inwardly he contemplates the nuances of the agreement. He realizes that, though he can't influence sales directly, his profit share remains unaffected by the costs incurred in that department. It becomes apparent that the Lu family places significant trust in the efficacy of Yang's beauty-preserving pill. In a gesture of gratitude, Lu's dad extends an offer of an unused house to Yang, expressing appreciation for his kindness towards Lu. He highlights the convenience it would bring, especially considering Yang's current rental situation. Yang, with humility, accepts the offer, acknowledging the practicality of the arrangement and expressing gratitude. Fast forward a month, and Yang is discussing his burgeoning entrepreneurial ventures with a friend. Confident in his vision, Yang shares his belief that their journey has just begun. Referencing the popularity of his medicine, he sees it as the cornerstone for a growing business empire. The friend concurs, recognizing the solid foundation laid, especially evident in the ongoing auction for Yang's sought-after product. Yang confidently shares with his friend that the current product is just the beginning, hinting at a grander vision for a future business empire. His enthusiasm suggests a belief in the potential for more groundbreaking ventures. In the midst of this conversation, a call from Lu interrupts, reminding Yang of their plan to purchase a car. Yang acknowledges the oversight and assures Lu he's on the way. Upon reaching the Qian family car dealer, Yang faces a mild scolding from Linhuan for his tardiness to which Yang offers a traffic-related excuse. Lu then designates Xiao Bei as the family's representative to assist Yang in choosing a car. Xiao Bei queries Yang about the price range he's considering for a car, to which Yang initially thinks of a moderately priced option. However, Lu intervenes, advising Yang to opt for a more luxurious model in the $2 million range. This suggestion leaves Yang visibly shocked, as it is a stark contrast to the frugal lifestyle he was accustomed to. Despite Lu's offer to cover the expenses, Yang hesitates at the extravagant price tag, expressing his reservations. Lu, in response, emphasizes the appropriateness of Yang, now in a different social standing, owning the best car he desires. As the trio proceeds with their shopping, Yang watches them, reflecting on the vast difference in the lifestyle of the wealthy, realizing that this is a glimpse into their world. In an unexpected encounter, Yang is hailed by his ex-girlfriend, who promptly attempts to belittle him insinuating that he's now employed at a car dealership after their breakup. Yang calmly corrects her, stating that he's there to purchase a car. Unfazed, the ex-girlfriend derisively laughs, questioning Yang's ability to afford a significant vehicle. Simultaneously, a portly man approaches, and the ex-girlfriend identifies Yang as the supposedly impoverished ex from her school days, who previously worked at a bar. In an amusing twist of fate, Xie Ding, an acquaintance of Yang's ex-girlfriend, approaches Yang with an arrogant introduction, flaunting his position as the head of personnel at Tianyang's foreign investment department. Unbeknownst to Xie Ding, he assumes that flaunting his upcoming wedding and plans to buy an expensive car would somehow belittle Yang. However, Yang remains unfazed by Xie Ding's attempts to provoke him. Yang, in a swift counterattack, perceptively comments on Xie Ding's seemingly inflated ego and suggests that he might need medical attention for his perceived shortcomings. Caught off guard, Xie Ding, attempting to save face, 
resorts to mocking Yang's financial status and challenges him to prove his worth by driving a luxurious car and bringing a girlfriend to the wedding. Yang, taking the challenge in stride, wishes Xia Ding good luck on his upcoming date, leaving the encounter with a casual and confident demeanor. The next day at the car dealership, Yang is presented with the car he ordered, the latest model launched by the dealer, and the only available unit for sale. Although he now has the car for the bet, he's still missing a crucial component, a girlfriend. Determined to uphold his image, Yang ponders various options. Suddenly, a call from Lu interrupts his thoughts. She invites him over, but Yang, driven by his recent encounter with his ex, declines, stating the urgency of attending his ex's wedding. Intrigued, Lu questions the existence of an ex-girlfriend, to which Yang cryptically responds. Realizing the need for a companion for the impending event, Yan hesitantly decides to approach Lu for help. Outside Lu's villa, Yan is visibly nervous but assures himself that everything should go smoothly. When Lu emerges with her friend and calls for Yan, he's momentarily captivated by her beauty. As Lu instructs him to get going, Yan, still nervous but with a newfound determination, prepares to face the challenge of his ex's wedding with Lu by his side. During the journey, Yang gathers the courage to ask Lu if she'd accompany him, playing the role of his girlfriend. Lu's response is affirmative and supportive, emphasizing the reciprocity of their friendship. Upon arriving at the wedding venue, the fat man instructs the girl not to underestimate the corporate manager when he arrives. However, their attention is drawn to another car pulling up. The girl assumes it's the manager but is corrected by the fat man, who notes that the manager's car is valued at around one million unlike the present $2 million car. A stunning woman, Lu, emerges, captivating everyone in attendance. Perplexed, the fat man queries the girl about the unexpected guest, but she remains clueless. Taking the initiative, the fat man approaches Lu, expressing his admiration and inquiring about her identity. In response, Lu calls for Yang, who steps out of the car, and together they seamlessly embark on the charade of being a couple, adding an unexpected twist to the wedding festivities. As Yang emerges, the girl is visibly shocked, prompting the fat man to question her previous portrayal of Yang as a mere average wage earner. She speculates that Yang must have hired someone to act on his behalf, initiating another round of insults directed at him. Yang and Lu maintain their composure, understanding that the situation has yet to unfold completely. Despite the unfriendly welcome from the girl and the fat man's mocking idiom, Yang and Lu remain silent, knowing that the real amusement is about to unfold. Entering the venue and taking their seats, Lu expresses disappointment in the groom, revealing he wasn't the impressive figure she had anticipated. Lin Huan joins the conversation, questioning Yang's previous interest in his ex-girlfriend. The fat man and the girl persist in insulting Yang, creating an uncomfortable atmosphere, yet Yang and Lu remain composed, fully aware that the tables may turn in their favor soon. Yang maintains his calm demeanor, choosing to disregard the insults hurled at him. With a firm tone, he cautions the offenders to reconsider their arrogance, hinting that the three individuals accompanying him are not to be taken lightly. Unfazed by Yang's words, the fat man continues to mock and suggests that he could easily rent the three girls for a meager amount. However, the situation takes an unexpected turn when the deputy general manager of Tianyang Foreign Investment arrives. The fat man promptly shifts his focus, rising to welcome the esteemed guest. The fat man, attempting politeness, greets Vice President Xiang but his efforts go unnoticed. The arrival of Vice President Xiang creates confusion for the fat man and the girl. Vice President Xiang, showing familiarity, approaches Lu, acknowledging her and recognizing the influential Lin and powerful Qian families in attendance. Stunned by this revelation, both the fat man and the girl are left speechless. Lu, seeking clarity, inquires about Vice President Xiang's identity. He recounts their prior meeting at a Chamber of Commerce event hosted by Lu Shanhai. Vice President Xiang, the Deputy General Manager of Tianyang Foreign Investment, formally introduces himself. Curious, he asks about the young man accompanying Lu. Lu confidently identifies Yang as her boyfriend. Vice President Xiang, after a moment of contemplation upon hearing the name, expresses surprise. He directly asks if Yang Yun is the developer of the youth preserving pill, and Yang confirms his identity. Curious about how his role in the pill's development became known, Yang questions Lu. She calmly explains that it's not a secret. Her father's sales channels target the affluent, and due to the remarkable effects of Yang's pill, inquiries were inevitable. Lu reassures Yang, 
stating that those aware of him are from the upper class, emphasizing that this recognition might prove beneficial in the future. Whispers circulate among onlookers, expressing surprise at the unexpected presence of Lou, the daughter of the prestigious Lou family, at such a mundane wedding. The added revelation that her boyfriend is the renowned inventor of the beauty pill sparks further intrigue, and there's a sense that trouble is brewing for Sia Ding, who seemingly picked the wrong adversaries. Amid the shocked reactions, Vice President Xiang calmly approaches Yang and Lu, inquiring if they are also here for Xie's wedding. Yang, with a touch of irony, responds that he believed he was. Xiang, with a stern expression, addresses the fat man, accusing him of harassing Ms. Lu and instructs him to apologize. Caught off guard, the fat man hastily denies intent. Amidst the uproar, amused spectators exchange laughs, predicting Xie Ding's downfall for daring to offend Lu Shanhai's daughter. The irony isn't lost on them, as the fat man, now on the verge of exposing Yang, hurls accusations about Yang's rapid rise from a humble bar worker to the acclaimed developer of the youth-preserving pill. The tension peaks when the fat man attempts to physically confront Yang, only to find himself on the receiving end of the pain he intended to inflict. Yang, incensed by the fat man's audacity, issues a stern warning, emphasizing the stark divide between their respective worlds. Amidst the chaos, a man with resplendent golden hair makes a sudden entrance, urging Yang to seize his actions. Identified as the formidable Han Shaosan, known for his penchant for combat, spectators brace for a dramatic turn. Rumors circulate about Han's unrestrained fighting spirit. Acknowledging Yang's impending predicament, onlookers predict a dire outcome for him. Ignoring the clamor, Han addresses the fat man, assuring him that he won't tolerate any bullying. The fat man, Seeking retribution, implores Han to help him teach Yang a lesson, confident that Han's intervention would leave Yang with no option but to submit. Han consents, expressing his intention to swiftly rectify the situation. Without hesitation, he delivers a forceful kick to Yang, asserting his dominance and vowing to bring Yang to heel within minutes. As Yang attempts to shield himself from the forceful kick, he instinctively retreats, inquiring about the identity of his attacker. The golden-haired man, Exuding an air of arrogance, declares himself as Han Shaosan, a renowned ancient warrior from the ancient capital and the sibling of Xia Ding. This revelation sparks a moment of surprise in Yang, prompting him to consider the nature of an ancient warrior's skills. Despite the initial shock, Yang remarkably parries the forceful kick with apparent ease, leaving the golden haired man astonished. Yang's inquisitive gaze remains fixed on his attacker, pondering the significance of being an ancient warrior and whether it involves mastery of techniques akin to the induction arts. In contrast, Han Shaosan, unable to comprehend why Yang isn't retaliating, grows increasingly impatient. Yang, breaking the silence, expresses a need to pose a question to the self-proclaimed ancient warrior. The golden-haired man remains resolute, citing the defense of his brother's honor as the driving force behind his actions. However, Yang, with a touch of humor, retorts with an inquiry about the concept of an ancient warrior prompting an irritated response from his assailant. The golden-haired man expresses disbelief that Yang, a practitioner himself, appears unfamiliar with the ancient martial arts, showcasing a mixture of frustration and disdain. The golden-haired man elucidates the lineage of ancient martial artists, tracing their roots back to the Huaxia clan, an ancient martial arts enclave with stringent teachings reserved solely for men. He highlights the hierarchical structure within the ancient martial arts domain, featuring multiple sects, and levels ranging from the initial first light energy layer to the pinnacle of the ninth layer. Upon reaching the ninth light energy layer, practitioners attain the esteemed title of young grand master, endowed with formidable internal force capable of demolishing wood and stone with a single punch. Above the light energy lies the elusive realm of dark energy, an exceptionally challenging feat. The golden-haired man boasts of his status as an ancient warrior, possessing light energy tier 5 strength, and suggests Yang might find a moment for a plea for mercy in the face of his prowess. Upon comprehending the explanation about the ancient martial arts, Yang reflects on his own practices of the universal good fortune and the wishing induction technique, which have propelled him to the first layer of qi refining. Uncertain about how this stage aligns with the realm of ancient warriors, Yang, lost in his contemplation, is abruptly thrust into action as the man launches an attack, emphasizing action over discourse. Yang, acknowledging the man's adept use of legs, recognizes the extraordinary strength that transcends the capacities of ordinary individuals. Despite being subjected to the man's powerful kicks and getting thrown back, Yang resolutely rises. 
With a demeanor reminiscent of Yamraj, he questions the true might of the so-called ancient warriors. Facing Yang's unexpected resilience and counterattack, the golden-haired man, taken aback and intimidated, seeks to understand the source of Yang's strength, questioning the master from whom he learned. Yan, adopting the evasive stance of a celebrity sidestepping a scandalous inquiry, refrains from divulging details about his training. Seizing the moment, Yang employs his wishing induction technique, tiger style, to deliver a single decisive punch, rendering the once confident man unconscious. The onlookers, witnessing this dramatic turn, are left in shock as Yang emerges from the metaphorical smoke, embodying the persona of an action film hero. With an air of triumph, Yang addresses the fallen man, Uncle Xia Ding, emphasizing his dependency on his brother as a metaphorical sword. The sudden transformation prompts guests to scatter, creating a chaotic scene, while Lu rushes towards Yang, expressing concern for his well-being. Anxiety lingers in the air as the fat man, bewildered and fearful, inquires about his golden-haired brother's inability to defeat Yang. Unwilling to tolerate further harassment, Yang firmly states that repeated troubles have stripped away his politeness. Leaving the scene with Lu, Yang seeks solace at a vantage point that offers a scenic view. The fat man, facing the aftermath, resorts to physical aggression when confronted by the girl about the ruined event. On this elevated perch, Yang, wearing a curious grin, questions Lu about the sudden excursion. Lu, stepping out of the car, playfully jests about Yang's seemingly dull expression. Yang dismisses her jokes as mundane, prompting Lu to shift her tone, sensing an underlying emotion. With a straightforward inquiry, she wonders if there's a concealed sentiment within Yang's heart, hinting at a deeper layer of emotion. Yang, with a self-assured tone, reveals that attending his ex's wedding was a conscious effort to release the lingering attachment in his heart. He subtly hints at his extraordinary nature, implying a deeper complexity beneath the surface. Privately, he reflects on the necessity of continuous growth to carve a significant place in the world, emphasizing the obligation to protect those dear to him. Lu, observing this transformation, feels an attraction and acknowledges Yang's newfound maturity and handsomeness. She encourages him, recognizing the extensive business network he has built with the success of the youth-preserving pill, advising him to navigate the lengthy path ahead with patience and composure. Yang, with a sense of grounded humility, discloses his peasant origins, affirming that, regardless of his future development, he won't disdain others. Drawing from his own experiences at the bottom, he expresses a commitment to wield his strength judiciously. Lu, evidently impressed, expresses approval, acknowledging the virtue in his stance. Transitioning to a lighter topic, Lu comments on the scenic beauty, creating a moment of shared appreciation. However, the atmosphere shifts when Lu mentions her plan to study abroad in France, revealing that her brother is already there. Yang, initially taken aback, manages to convey genuine enthusiasm. As Lu asks the poignant question about missing her, the emotional undercurrents begin to surface. Caught in a gaze, Yang and Lu find themselves under the unexpected downpour. Quick to act, Yang suggests seeking refuge in the car. However, the rain slit ground proves tricky, leading to Lu slipping. Yang, swift and protective, catches her and inquires about her well-being. Proximity heightens the moment's intimacy leaving both of them momentarily bashful. In an attempt to defuse the situation, Yang, with a mix of jest and care, offers his support. Opting to carry her, Yang picks Lu up, setting a somewhat romantic tone amid the rain. Lu, struggling to articulate her feelings, contemplates the complexities of the situation. As they drive, Lu, mindful of the dampness, proposes a stop at a villa hotel. Yang, responding with playful agreement, acknowledges the idea's appeal. Amidst the playful banter and light-hearted atmosphere, Lu, with a mischievous smile, contemplates Yang's innocence. She notes his apparent lack of awareness regarding the orchestrated sprained ankle, adding a layer of humor to their interaction. The setting shifts to a villa where, on the surface, both Lu and Yang appear a bit awkward. However, as the perspective broadens, it becomes evident that Yang is, in fact, tending to Lu's leg. After a thorough examination, Yang assures her that the issue should be resolved. Yet Lu, perhaps enjoying the attention, playfully requests him to continue the massage. In the midst of this, an unexpected disturbance interrupts their moment. A voice from outside, expressing frustration over a car accident, prompts Yang to investigate. Lu, showing concern, advises him to be careful. As Yang opens the front door, the narrative leaves a tantalizing cliffhanger, hinting at a surprising turn of events at the accident scene. In the midst of a tense situation, 
a woman's accusatory tone cuts through the air, blaming a man for a car accident caused by a heated argument. Frustration and fear escalate as she scolds the man for distracting the driver, who now faces severe consequences. Desperation sets in as the man, speaking into his phone, urgently calls the hospital, detailing the accident's location and the dire condition of his son. The woman issues a stern warning, emphasizing the potential consequences of her son's fate. Enter Yang, a calm and composed figure, responding to the chaotic scene. Seeking assistance, the woman implores him to help extract her son, still trapped in the car. Yang, unfazed, takes charge, reassuring the distressed mother. In his examination, Yang's skilled eyes quickly grasp the severity of the situation. His internal reflections reveal the gravity of the injuries, from fractures to life-threatening internal bleeding. Yang, with unwavering determination, steps forward, assuring the distressed parents that he can save their son. However, a fierce interruption from the man raises tensions, and Yang, momentarily unnerved, contemplates the challenge presented by this intense spirit. The woman intervenes, reigning in the man's hostility, recognizing Yang's benevolent intent. Permission granted, Yang approaches the injured patient with singular focus, understanding the immediacy of the situation. In a swift and calculated move, Yang dislodges the patient from the car, prioritizing the critical task at hand. His medical expertise comes to the forefront as he employs the hands of 13 Meridian's technique, a mysterious and impressive skill that leaves the onlookers in awe. Harnessing his internal energy, Yang adeptly applies True Chi to remedy the air duct congestion, demonstrating not just medical expertise but a mastery of mysterious internal energies. The transformation is palpable as the patient, once in a critical condition, steadily regains vitality under Yang's skillful care. With the crisis averted, Yang advises waiting for the imminent arrival of an ambulance, ensuring the patient's continued safety. The man, who had initially displayed hostility, undergoes a shift in demeanor, expressing gratitude and acknowledging his earlier lapse in judgment. However, an air of tension lingers as Yang, perceptive and unafraid, confronts the man about a potential dark past. The question about blood on the man's hands hangs in the air, creating a palpable sense of suspense. The man, in response, recognizes Yang's perceptive abilities. In a moment of tense acknowledgement, Yang commends Wang Mushing for shouldering the weight of numerous lives, a veiled reference to the man's likely military past. The exchange teeters on the edge of hostility, as Wang initially responds with a veiled threat, recognizing Yang's youth but also his perceptiveness. However, the atmosphere takes a sudden shift as Wang's demeanor transforms into a playful one. Introducing himself as Wang Mushing, a member of the Chinese army with combat experience, he commends Yang's intuition with a touch of camaraderie. Yang, in turn, maintains a polite and respectful tone, revealing that he is a college student, likely not much older than Wang's son. As the ambulance arrives, signaling the end of this unexpected encounter, Wang, with a gesture of gratitude, leaves his contact information, expressing a genuine intention to repay the debt of gratitude he feels toward Yang. Yang responds graciously to Mr. Wang's expressions of gratitude, downplaying his medical skills as a duty to help others. Yet, his mind drifts momentarily to thoughts of a missing father, vanished on the battlefield, a mystery shrouded in uncertainty. Swiftly dismissing these thoughts, Yang reaffirms his commitment to his training as a disciple of a wild deity. His aspirations for strength intertwine with a hope for answers about his father when the time is right. This introspection is abruptly interrupted by Lu's arrival prompting Yang to express concern about her being in the rain after a shower. However, Lu redirects the conversation, inquiring about the recent events. Yang, initially unsure of what she's referencing, recalls her question on the mountain. With a laugh and a reassuring touch, he playfully asserts that, indeed, he will miss her when she goes to France, styling himself as the caring elder brother. In response to Yang's playful assurance about missing her, Lu shares a laugh and teases him about harboring some kindness within. Unbeknownst to her, Yang carries a more profound sentiment in his thoughts, an apology to Ling Ling and a recognition of more pressing matters. As Yang arrives at his villa, his reflections reveal the hasty nature of his return, spurred by a quick change of clothes at his rental home. The spacious villa, a gift from an uncle, prompts contemplation on its feng shui and the subtle yet perceptible aura it exudes. Amidst these musings, Mink, his pet joyfully runs towards him. The sight of Mink's affectionate welcome brings a warm touch to the moment as the small creature leaps into Yang's arms. Summoning the universe pot and treating Mink to his favorite meal, 
Yang reflects on his foresight in collecting additional herbs and wild fruits at Yaowang Mountain. This preparation proves essential in catering to Mink's voracious appetite. Aware of the importance of time, Yang decides not to squander the moment and resolves to engage in his exercises. As he immerses himself in cultivation, a transformative process unfolds. Drawing parallels to the power of ancient beasts, Yang recognizes the significance of practicing the ancient books bestowed by his master. Although the universe pot facilitates the transformation of these texts, he contemplates the necessity of delving into a sea of consciousness to fully grasp their true essence. Cultivating through the night, Yang's golden eyes reflect the intensity of his practice. The wishing induction technique, on the brink of completion, prompts him to consider seeking guidance from his master on advancing to the second layer of qi refining. After completing his exercise, Yang rises, acknowledging that despite his recent success in establishing a profitable company and gaining wealth from the youth-preserving pill, the responsibilities of being a dutiful son persist. He harbors concerns about ensuring his grandmother's peace of mind and, with this in mind, has enlisted Lu Shichi's help to secure a conventional job. Yang ponders the value of his newfound success and wealth, hoping that these achievements will bring comfort to his family. As he goes about his morning routine, including brushing his teeth, Yang contemplates the potential challenges of balancing familial responsibilities with professional aspirations. He particularly worries about the success of his job application, aspiring for a smooth process. The weight of familial expectations and the desire to bring solace to his grandmother weigh on him as he heads to the company for his application. At the reception desk, a man named Mei Yugan questions Yang about his identity, as the recommended Mr. Yang by Mr. Liu. Yang confirms and seeks to know Mei's role in the company. Mei Yugan, the personnel manager of the Cultural Relics Department at Zhao Group, inquires about Yang's qualifications. Yang, confident in his academic achievements as a top student in the History and Archaeology Department of the Ancient Capital College, asserts his expertise in identifying cultural relics. However, Mei Yugan interrupts Yang, expressing dissatisfaction and accusing him of resorting to boasting and connections. Yang, discerning Mei's displeasure, clarifies that while he was recommended, his true goal is to contribute his exceptional professional abilities to the company. Mei, skeptical, chuckles at Yang's assertion of being the best in his field. Mei Yugan, exasperated and scornful, raises his voice, expressing disdain for Yang. He accuses Yang of being like many others he's encountered, loud and arrogant with nothing substantial to support their claims. Mei dismisses Yang's self-proclaimed identity as a true archaeologist and questions the worth of Yun's science and technology, LTD, the company Lu allegedly helped Yang establish at a young age. Mei predicts the downfall of the company, deeming it a noisy exaggeration. Provoked by these disparaging remarks about his company, Yang, fueled by anger, confronts Mei and forcefully pins him against the wall. The intensity of Yang's emotions leads to a display of extraordinary strength, breaking through the wall. Mei, shocked and fearful, questions Yang's humanity, realizing he might be dealing with someone beyond the ordinary. In a frightened tone, Mei demands an explanation for Yang's actions. Yang, maintaining a threatening tone, warns Mei to watch his words, cautioning him against making irresponsible and sarcastic remarks. Mei, trying to assert himself, claims to have faced all sorts of challenges in his many years in the workplace and declares that he isn't intimidated by Yang. However, deep down, Mei admits that while he initially wanted to witness some assertiveness, Yang's level of rudeness and arrogance has exceeded his expectations. He finds himself strangely drawn to this unexpected display, appreciating the unique treatment he's receiving. As Mei blushes in response to Yang's assertiveness, Yang is taken aback, questioning the reason behind Mei's sudden change in demeanor. Yang is surprised by Mei's unexpected reaction and jumps to a conclusion about Mei's potential romantic feelings, wondering if Mei might be gay. The abrupt shift in focus occurs when Yang and Mei notice a dog barking happily, diverting their attention from the tense moment. Yang, recognizing a familiar face in the form of Zhao Nan, reflects on their previous encounter in the park. He wonders if this is the same person who saved him back then. As Zhao approaches and addresses him, Yang confirms his identity, prompting a positive reaction from Zhao, who remembers Yang as the one who saved her puppy, Wang. Yang, surprised by Zhao's recollection, asks if she still remembers him. Zhao, with a smile, acknowledges that she could never forget someone who saved her pet. Mei, observing the interaction between Yang and Zhao, becomes shocked, sensing a connection between them. 
his mind starts to conjure up imaginative scenarios, fueled by his inability to see what's actually happening. Mei, possibly influenced by these thoughts, decides to interrupt Yang and Zhao's conversation, subtly probing into their relationship. Yang, perceiving Mei's tone, deduces that Zhao holds a significant position in the company, possibly as its president. When Mei asks Zhao about Yang's relationship with her, she responds by saying they have a good friendship. However, before Yang can clarify, Mei interjects and steers the conversation in a misleading direction, claiming that Yang came for a date. Yang, visibly frustrated, reacts with a facial expression that suggests he wants to retaliate against Mei for spreading such misinformation. Zhao, seemingly unfazed by Mei's remark, calmly reflects on Mei's reputation in the company. She implies that Mei has a history of trying to romantically pursue male colleagues. From Chao's perspective, this is a known aspect of Mei's behavior. Zhao acknowledges Mei's statement, apologizes for the interruption, and subtly expresses surprise that Yang would engage in such activities. As Yang attempts to clarify the situation and deny Mei's allegations, Mei dramatically starts to cry, accusing Yang of making advances and then denying them when others arrive. Yang, visibly irritated by Mei's performance, contemplates slapping him for the false accusations. In the midst of this, Zhao, unswayed by Mei's theatrics, begins to leave. Yang, feeling the need to set the record straight, stops Zhao and asserts that he came to apply for a job, trying to salvage his professional image amid the chaotic personal drama created by Mei's antics. Next, in Zhao's office, she apologizes to Yang for the misunderstanding caused by Mei's theatrics, expressing surprise at Mei's apparent fondness for him. Yang, facing the situation with a calm smile, reassures Zhao. She reflects on the miraculous twist of fate that the person who saved her dog in the past is now applying to work at her company. Yang formally introduces himself, emphasizing his confidence in identifying cultural relics and his eagerness to contribute to the company. Zhao, in turn, introduces herself as Zhao Nan, the president of the Zhao Group, expressing pleasure at Yang's enthusiasm. As Yang and Zhao discuss arranging paperwork, Mei, thrilled about the unfolding events, appears visibly happy. Yang, on the other hand, subtly attempts to create some distance from Mei. The scene takes a turn when someone knocks on the office door, and Zhao, recognizing the visitor, prepares for their entrance. But a worker interrupts their conversation, requesting entry to take out the trash. Zhao, irritated by the interruption, denies access, citing the ongoing discussion with guests. The worker, seemingly insistent, claims a routine schedule for trash disposal. Zhao, angered by the worker's defiance, threatens his job security and decides to personally escort him out. However, the situation takes a dangerous turn as the worker, revealing a concealed knife, attempts to attack Zhao. In a swift and astonishing move, Yang intercepts the knife with just two fingers, reassuring Zhao with calm confidence. The onlookers are left in shock at Yang's incredible feat without missing a beat. Yang follows up with a powerful kick, sending the assailant flying into a wall. In the aftermath of the attack, the assailant, on the verge of defeat and seemingly desperate, accuses Zhao Nan of being the cause for losing his job and accumulating gambling debts, vowing not to let her escape unscathed. Just as the tension reaches its peak, a concerned girl enters the office. Having heard the commotion, Zhao, quick to take action, instructs the girl, named Ai Yi, to call the police urgently. Despite her evident fear, Ai Yi manages to dial the emergency number with trembling hands. Meanwhile, Mei, still in shock from the unfolding events, reflects on the unexpected revelation that Yang is a practitioner, realizing he might have misjudged him. Seeking clarity, Yang directs a question to Zhao, recognizing the assailant's familiarity with her and prompting the need for an explanation about their connection. Zhao, taking a moment to compose herself, reveals that the assailant was among those terminated due to misconduct, including unauthorized gambling during work hours. She had implemented strict measures upon taking charge of the company, leading to discontent among certain individuals. Yang, understanding the context, commends Zhao for her decisive actions, expressing his belief that she is a capable and commendable president. His praise leaves an impression on Zhao, who appreciates the support. Concerned for Zhao's safety, Yang proposes escorting her home, wary that the attacker might have accomplices. Despite the recent turmoil, Yang's offer reflects a protective and responsible disposition. Zhao, expressing gratitude, insists on treating Yang to dinner as a way of repaying the favor. Yang, in turn, believes he should be the one treating her, creating a friendly banter over who owes whom. To settle the friendly dispute, 
Chow cleverly suggests a compromise, proposing that they share meals, one on her and the other on Yang. Yang agrees, and their banter reflects a light-hearted exchange of goodwill. As they head to the parking lot, Yang surprises Zhao with a luxurious car. This leaves Zhao puzzled, pondering how someone who, just a month ago, was an ordinary worker could afford such opulence. The incident with the knife adds another layer of mystery. Yang's skills hint at him being an ancient warrior. Zhao, intrigued and bewildered, questions Yang's true motives and background. Yang and Zhao reach her destination, and she kindly suggests Yang doesn't need to accompany her inside. Yang agrees but reminds her of their plan to have a meal after work the next day, reinforcing the friendly connection they're establishing. As Yang contemplates the unpredictable nature of life, reminiscing about unexpectedly becoming Zhao's subordinate, he's interrupted by Yang Lin. The reunion sparks memories, and Yang acknowledges Yang Lin's presence. Yang Lin, noticing Yang dropping off a beautiful woman, playfully comments on Yang's seemingly fortunate love affairs after work, injecting a bit of humor into the conversation. Yang, Maintaining a friendly demeanor, corrects Yang Lin's assumption about his luck with women, clarifying that Zhao is his boss. He suggests Lin accompany him to the graduation party. As they head towards Yang's car, Lin, misinterpreting the situation due to the presence of a nearby bicycle, feels a surge of pity. Assuming Yang is facing financial difficulties and resorting to selling vegetables, the actual owner of the vegetable cart intervenes, explaining the slow spinach sales and assures Lin that his wife will handle the steamed bun sales next time. This unexpected turn leaves Lin with a mix of confusion and relief. Yang extends an unexpected invitation to Lin, urging him to hop into his car. Lin, astonished by the luxurious vehicle, can hardly believe that someone part-time could afford such opulence. Meanwhile, at Shanghai Hotel in room 9427, Yang's schoolmates engage in light banter. A guy with blue hair proudly recounts a situation where he skillfully handled some troublemakers. However, his exaggerated storytelling leaves others amused rather than impressed. There's a subtle undercurrent of skepticism among the onlookers. Despite the boasting, the blue-haired guy harbors hopes of gaining the attention of Lu Lingling, whom he admires like a goddess. Just as his imagination takes flight, Yang enters the room, causing a shift in dynamics. Lu greets Yang warmly, triggering a mix of emotions in the blue-haired guy who now finds himself overshadowed. Upon entering the room, Yang offers a polite apology, explaining his tardiness due to unforeseen circumstances. Instantly, a buzz of excitement courses through the crowd as they recognize Yang, the recent founder of a thriving company. Curiosity fuels a barrage of questions from his schoolmates. Inquisitive minds seek clarification on various rumors surrounding Yang. One daring soul boldly asks about his alleged relationship with Lu Lingling, while another can't help but marvel at the sleek sports car that Yang arrived in. Amidst the inquiries, the blue-haired man chimes in, humorously comparing Yang's vibrant energy to that of an overpowered protagonist in a city cultivation manhwa, adding a touch of levity to the discussion. In an attempt to defend Yang, Lin intervenes and discloses that Yang was merely acting as a driver, dropping off his boss. This revelation brings evident joy to the blue-haired guy, who seizes the opportunity to ridicule Yang. He questions how someone he deems a loser could possibly own a sports car and establish a company. Support for this viewpoint begins to circulate among onlookers, with some agreeing that Yang seems out of place in such a gathering. However, Lu, undeterred, steps forward to counter these claims. She clarifies that she witnessed Yang purchase the car and asserts her share in his company, emphasizing Yang's significant role in the Lu family's ventures. Shocking everyone present, Lu takes her defense of Yang a step further by declaring him her boyfriend, adding a surprising twist to the unfolding drama. In the aftermath of Lu's bold proclamation about her relationship with Yang, the blue-haired man is left in shock, struggling to comprehend the unexpected twist. Yang, seemingly unfazed, candidly suggests there's no need for a charade of pretending to be a couple. However, Lu, protective of her brother, asserts her determination to counter any criticism directed at him especially from someone who harbors romantic feelings for her. The revelation of Yang's successful business and car ownership sparks a flurry of inquiries and requests for job opportunities and car loans. As the evening progresses, the group enjoys a dinner, with the earlier tensions seemingly diffused. After the reception, Yang expresses his intention to escort Lu home. She, however, insists that it's unnecessary, citing Lin Huan's availability and the continuation of the party the next day. Despite Yang's offer, Lu encourages him to return home. As Lu prepares to depart, 
Yam wishes her well with a mix of light-hearted banter and genuine concern. Lu, in response, assures him that it's not a permanent farewell and promises to return. Lin Huang's arrival prompts a playful comment from Yang, hinting at romantic interests. During their parting, Lu expresses her heartfelt goodbye, addressing Yang as, Brother, as the car drives away, Lu daydreams about potential romance abroad, pondering the possibility of meeting someone special. On the other side, Yang contemplates Lu's journey, expressing his hope for her success and safety. Simultaneously, Lu wonders if Yang will feel a sense of loneliness without her presence. Their thoughts echo a bittersweet anticipation of the unknown adventures and challenges that lie ahead for both of them.